All right, so I'm gonna take the upper intake manifold off of my 2014 Mustang with the 3.7 V6. Should be the same process for 2011 to 2016, 17, whenever, where they still had the, uh, the 3.7 V6. Um, if you came here from my spark plug video, I appreciate that. I was doing a plug video and you gotta take this manifold off to get to the side of these plugs here. But I also wanted uh, just a how to take your manifold on and off video because some people take them off to port them and they're not even going to mess with the plugs. So that's why I did it this way. Uh, a little bit complicated. YouTube would think I'm copying my own videos if I just cut th this part from my plug video and just made a separate video out of it. So that's why we're doing it this way. So anyways, again, if you came from the spark plug video, I appreciate it. So um, yeah, let's get this thing off of here so I can do the other side plugs. So, obviously, you gotta unplug everything that's attached to it. You should uh, disconnect your battery while you're working on it. Get that uh, negative off of there and down out of the way to where it's not gonna pop up and reconnect. So, you wanna be careful. <laughs> These are all plastic, okay? So, they're gonna be, well, that one's metal, feels like, yeah. But this is plastic, this is plastic, so. And, of course, the uh, manifold itself is plastic. So, you wanna be careful with all this stuff. Don't break these or you're gonna have a vacuum leak nightmare so these little clips here the way these work if you push this tab down okay there's a little plastic ring that loops over top of another plastic ring in here and when you push this down it makes it expand so you should be able to push this tab down and then carefully wiggle it off like that see if I can get that action on there see you press it like that and the whole thing expands so it'll come off of that so there's several like that. Um, this one here, I believe it's the same, although it's a different collar, so I'm not 100% yet. Uh, but it's upside down, so that's going to be a pain in the butt. Well, you know what, we can leave this one attached because I'm just going to take, just disconnect the uh, intake work there. Um, but once I get this off, we'll take a look at it, if it's the same, different, whatever, so we know what we're looking at here. I'll go over everything that we unplug. I'm going to have to get that out of there. So I'm going to unplug everything, and then we'll go over everything that has to come off. All right, so this right here, you don't have to unplug. As you can see, I just unbolted it. Make sure no crap falls down in there. I always put my bolts back where they came out once I remove the parts so I know where they go and I don't lose them. So that unplugged there. Um, uh, disconnect this bracket here, okay? There was, hmm, it looks like there should be something there, but I don't really, I didn't take anything off of there. Disconnect here, you got to pull the red tab back and then press down on the black to pull it out. On this one, you just press the black tab and pull it out. Okay, I, this turned on me. I popped that out of there so I could pull this out of the way. And again, that's that plastic line, so be careful. Obviously, it disconnected here. I'm going to leave my throttle body attached. Uh, that way, I don't have to replace the throttle body gasket, which I already bought, <laughs> but I don't have to detach it. So let's see what's over here. Oh, yeah, that's a wonderful thing. That's what was right there. So this is interesting. This looks like two hose clamps, but it's one single one. So I had to use my long player blah, pair of needle nose to simultaneously squeeze those together so I could pop it off. And that's that metal line. And uh, it was mounted right there. So I took that out. You gotta pop a couple of these out. There's this, this one here. These plastic things just pop out. Um, uh, this one right here went up in there somewhere. Yeah, right there. So they're just these crappy things. You're probably going to break them, popping them out. I believe there was one other on this side somewhere I had to pop off. Uh, no, it was that one. Okay. Oh, down here for that. So, where was that one? I was stuck in the side there. So then, I believe that's it. If not, I'll let you know. Should just be removing the mounting bolts here. They're all going to be 
around this location. I believe that's one too. And I gotta see if there's any hiding down in there, which there may be. So I'll get these bolts out and I'll pop it off and then show you where all those bolt locations are. All right, I got them all loose. There's just seven. So there's two on each end, one there, one there, same back there along this row here and then the one there seven total so i'm gonna get these all the way out and then we'll pop her off all right so it's really weird uh this great big long one here comes right out but all these little ones they stay in place apparently so yep and it's loose so i'm gonna need two hands for this i'm gonna pull up slowly especially be careful with my plastic lines and such and uh, make sure I'm not caught on anything as I pull it out. Get it off of there and show you what it looks like. Okay, so, yeah, no surprises. Uh, it came right off. I just wiggled a little and pulled up. It didn't stick or anything for me. There's your lower intake manifold. So, it does appear that I removed everything correctly. Oh, oh forgot about that big one. It just fell out on me. So, there's the underside. There's your gasket. So yeah, all of these, uh, that thing, the retainer that it goes into just holds it in place so they don't fall out, but that big one does. Fell down in there, I gotta get it, so. Pretty simple. So yeah, that's all there is to it. And uh, for me, everything, uh, every little bolt that I had to take out is uh, 5 16th, so far everything. Disconnecting the battery, uh, coil pack, bolts, and uh, all those mounting bolts were 5 16 So, well, now I can do the plugs on this side. Same as the other side. Get those back, get the new ones in there, and then uh, we'll get this intake back on here. And uh, I'll show you how to clean this up, we'll put the new gasket on it, and show the torque sequence. Now, some guys are saying you can reuse these because these are a rubber gasket um, kind of like a uh, mm, just bent my fingernail backwards <laughs> kind of like a, a valve cover gasket you know they're rubber and flexible and also there's none stuck up there that not been damaged or anything um, but with your intake uh, plenum there if you get air leaks in there that can cause issues performance issues that can cause cylinders to run lean so I'd rather just pay the 20 bucks and replace the gasket so that's what I'm doing but if some of you guys you know want to argue in the comments oh it's a lifetime gasket or you can reuse it or whatever it's fine if you want to do that but I'd rather spend the extra 20 bucks to make sure I don't got a lean condition or no engine codes or any performance issues anything like that so that's what I'm going to do and uh, because these are rubber and there's not anything to scrape off of the gasket scraper all I'm gonna do is just uh, take a paper towel or like a shop paper towel and basically wipe this until it's dry and I'm gonna wipe away from the inlets because you don't want any of that shit falling down in there so I'm just gonna wipe around it but drag it out that way I got a, a you know clean dry surface to mate this new gasket to and then when I pull this one out well, I'm probably going to wipe this down first, and then I'm going to pull it out if there's any oil and gunk down in those valleys where this gasket sets. I'm going to clean that out with a Q-tip or something like that. So I'm going to get this cleaned up, and then we'll get this thing installed. For those of you who are going to ask for a part number, that's the Felpro MS97214. Alright, I got the new one pressed in, so as long as you don't shake it around or bump it too much, it shouldn't pop out okay I gotta double check make sure I didn't get a rock in there um, and then I'm gonna carefully line it up set it down make sure nothing's getting caught under the edge of it also make sure my gasket doesn't tip out and get pinched I gotta make sure that it stays in there just like that the whole time uh, if you do have issues with yours falling out, which I don't think I'm going to have the issue. I've always bought Felpro for a reason. They may not be the best, but it's what I've always used and not had any problems. Um, sometimes if you buy inferior gaskets, though, they might not fit 100% snug. Uh, if it's falling out on you, 
uh, you can put little dabs of RTV sealant, uh, the you know the appropriate stuff for the engine, um, and uh, it'll after it sets up a little bit, it it should hold it in place for you. Also, some people are probably going to get in the comments here and say you should put RTV all over that. Well, I don't know if you noticed, but there's none on it from the factory. So as long as you use a good gasket and clean it up good and torque it properly and all that, you're not going to have an issue. So I'm not using it. All right, so I got it set in there, but I'm going to go around all corners, all edges, and make sure there's nothing caught under it before I start bolting it down. All right, just to let you know, it should sit there. Kind of nice like that. It's got a little bit of teeter, but I did get this caught under the back edge, so watch out for that. Now, that's not the only thing you can get caught under there, um, but for me, that's what I got caught. And uh, looks like here, too. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, that sits there. Okay. So, I've already went around it. I was just double-checking that there. Everything's good. I got that caught under there, but I'm good now. Double check all these, everything you unplugged. So, good to go. I'm going to get these hand started down. And snug down just finger tight with an extension. And then we'll go over the uh, torque sequence and the torque value. Be very careful not to cross thread these. These bolts will cross thread and strip very easily. Uh, this whole thing just sitting there pivots to the passenger side a little. So what I did was I got this one started first, which at first I didn't want to start. It was tight. I had to pivot this this way so it would go flush against uh, where it mounts. I got this down and one of these down, so now the rest should be lined up. But what I like to do is turn them backwards first. Sometimes you can, there it was, get that little click where the threads line up. Almost. Well, it depends on the angle. Sometimes you can feel it and hear it. It should go in real easy, and if it's not, you either need to move this a little to get it to line up, or you're starting to cross thread, so back out and try again. They should all go in real easy. All right, so here's the torque sequence, okay? That was like glowing in the light. So anyways, there's your torque sweep, uh, sequence. You go from one to seven in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's gonna be, uh, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's 10 Newton meters of torque or 89 inch pounds. So you want to torque it to that spec in that order. And then it's a good idea to go over it a second time after you've done that just to make sure any don't loosen up and you still got good torque on them. Those tightened up super nice. I'm used to uh, torquing down plastic manifolds and sometimes even metal ones. And the bolt just kind of seems to keep going. These snugged up very nice. They were like loose, loose, loose. You start just start to feel a little drag and then it was tight. So those are perfect. No extra turn on that. Just torque them down to what it says and you're good to go. And like I said, I did go over the pattern a second time to make sure that they were all still tight, which they were. So now we just got to hook everything back up. So we need to get this bracket on here. Plug this back in, which is probably going to require, well, for one, it's not, there we go. Push that down so it can pass, which it did, and now it's locked. Again, be careful because it's plastic. We'll uh, uh, let's see here. Okay, that one was for over there. So plug this back in here. Get it plugged back in there until it clicks. I got to route that back through. Okay, she goes there, snug it down, make sure you pop that down in the hole there before you tighten these. So then we go here, and then there, okay, nice click, we need to put our intake tube back on the throttle body here. Now you want to be careful here, a lot of times this bottom lip, maybe you can see it there, it gets caught, so always try to hang the bottom first and then slip the top over. 
line it up with that tooth and then make sure you tighten it down then we got our metal line here need to oh that is for the plastic one but i'm going to bolt this metal down first and then your plastic hmm it doesn't it's it's putting that on a bind that pop in there hmm that's where it goes maybe this bra oh it's backwards remember it spun that's why i was gonna say i'm not gonna put it back in there because i had to pull on that too hard and make sure that's spun around the right way bracket there tighten that down and then yeah, i'm gonna need two hands for this well i need to undo that because you need this as i said in the beginning so you have movement so you can get that over so i gotta squeeze both these in at the same time actually it probably yeah i gotta squeeze them in at both time though to move them back to where they were and i need two hands for that also if you loosen this bolt like i did so you could pivot that bracket out of the way make sure you remember to tighten that bolt back up i almost forgot and then on these it's not going to go anywhere because it, it's clipped into place but added measure of safety if you want to push those back in and uh, you got this little guy on the back still. Right. Oh, man. It is like, oh, well. This little guy on the back right there. Didn't want to spin one way on me, so I spun it around the other way. It was giving me less resistance to spin it one way than the other. So, double check, triple check everything. That should be it. Everything's plugged back in. The only thing we need to do is reconnect our battery. Good to go. So, if that helped you out, please hit the like button for me. Uh, if you want to see any more videos of the Stang, I'm going to have a playlist on the channel. And we got a bunch of parts going on there. Cold air intake, drive shaft, 373 gears, MPT tunes. So if you want to follow the build... Please subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and you'll be notified when I post. Again, thanks for watching. Have a good one.